Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And in this video, I'm going to be making some pixel art using a program called Clip Studio Paint, which is a multi-purpose digital illustration software that has lots of unique tools for drawing, painting, animation, and comic books. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video and allowing me to try out the program. And just kind of poking around and seeing what it's capable of has inspired me to try creating my own comic book, but in a pixel art style. My idea for the comic is called Gary's Galaxy, and it's the story of a cat who lives aboard a spaceship, and we get to experience life from his point of view. This is a rough sketch of what I plan to make in pixel art form, and in this one-page story, Gary detects an intruder on board. I've hidden the last panel because I don't want to spoil the reveal quite yet, uh, but let's get going and turn this into a pixel art comic. Before jumping into the pixel work, I obviously needed to get acclimatized to the software, and a great place to start with that is by customizing the default workspace into something that caters to a pixel art workflow. All the little windows you see here can be dragged and set into different parts of the screen, and you can also just remove some of them if you prefer to tidy up the workspace entirely. So here's how I've organized my workspace for pixel art. I've got the tools and tool property panels along the left side. The most important ones for me are gonna be the brush and the pen, as well as the marquee and magic wand selection tools. I've moved the color information up to the top right corner, and I swapped out the default color wheel for the HSV sliders, since that's kind of my preferred format for color selection. Below that, I've placed an information panel that will display coordinates and sizing, uh, which is gonna be essential for getting a readout of my pixel dimensions while navigating the canvas and making selections. In the bottom right is the list of layers and associated functions, uh, which is how it is in the default workspace anyway. And then with a bit of leftover space, I've popped in the navigator panel, which gives a little preview of your entire document and shows the active area of the current zoom. With pixel art, we spend a lot of our time zoomed in super close to the illustration. So it's informative to also have this constant wide view of the image like this to see how things are reading from a distance. Additionally, I've gone through the shortcut settings here to enter my own preferred shortcuts. Uh, you kind of, you know, have the muscle memory associated with certain actions and that's pretty hard to break. Uh, so thankfully there's an extensive list of shortcuts you can edit and assign here. Throughout the video I'll share the default shortcut associated with the tools I'm using, but just know that it's completely customizable from here also. And with that I've saved my workspace so I don't lose the settings, so now let's get into making the pixel art comic. The first thing we'll need to decide is what canvas size to use in order to make a pixel art comic or manga page. Well for example, a B6 format page, which the internet has told me is a common selection for manga, is 128 by 182 millimeters. So for starters, it'd be fitting to choose a pixel art canvas size that holds that same aspect ratio. Using 128 by 182 pixels would obviously be the same aspect ratio. And to be honest, that sizing would actually be about right for a nice low res pixel art piece. But I'm thinking that it wouldn't be enough resolution to allow for a lot of dialogue lettering. So if we go ahead and double each dimension there to 256 by 364 pixels, that should allow for enough resolution to create some small lettering within the page. And it'll also mean that the illustration work can be a little bit more detailed in general. So we'll start by creating a new illustration document and entering those pixel values into the width and height. The top panel here is gonna be an establishing shot of the ship flying through space. So I dragged out a rectangular area using the selection tool and then filled that selection with solid black. Next, I select the rectangle and shrink the selection by one pixel and delete the interior, which is just gonna leave us with a clean one pixel frame for the panel. A faster way to do this would probably just be by dropping down a rectangle outline using the shape tool, but I didn't actually think of that at the time, uh, even though I went ahead and made this little circle outline using the shape tool right after. This one is gonna define the main body of the ship, and right now I'm just cleaning up the shape using an eraser. With pixel art, you'll often run into odd cornering with certain circle sizes, but I find that erasing parts of the outline can help create the effect of having more natural curvature to a rounded shape. For the remainder of the spaceship, I'm using a tool called the Dot Pen, which is essentially a quick and reliable one pixel brush. There are a few places you can find one pixel options in this program, uh, like within the pencil and brush tool categories, but the Dot Pen is found under the Pen Tool category. And honestly, I found it to be the most responsive out of any of those options. Uh, like it seemed to have the best immediate feedback and feel from my input. So if you're doing one pixel work, I'd highly recommend this tool as the primary. Uh, full disclosure though, I actually do all my pixel art using the trackpad on my laptop. So perhaps that sensitivity and feel is something that I'm hyper aware of anyway because of that. Uh, but I at least just wanted to share my experience with it. 
If you want to make lines with the dot pen, uh, or any brush or pencil for that matter, after placing the first pixel down, you hold shift and it'll show kind of a couple guides for how that angle is going to be connected. So I've used that here to create a fillable shape for the jet trail of the ship. And then I go in and play around to refine the silhouette. In order to give the edges of this jet trail a softer look, or kind of like a gradual fading away, I'm using a dithering brush here set to the 50% option, which uses this checkerboard application of pixels. And this is really fitting here because in comics and manga that use monotone printing, gradients are applied in what's called a halftone style, where rather than using solid gray, you're actually using combinations of black and white patterns, usually with circles, uh, to kind of approximate that in-between tone. So with pixel art, we can achieve a similar effect using dithering, and it's just so much faster to do when you have a specialized brush that can do it like this. Uh, this became kind of a common motif throughout the artwork, so I'll share a few other examples in a little bit. For the title lettering, I really wanted something that felt very custom and handmade. Uh, so what I'm doing is using this tool called the Milli Pen, which is very much like the dot pen, but it lets you alter the brush settings. Um, actually, you can also do customizing with this sort of stuff to make your own brushes, uh, which I believe is how the dithering brush pack was made. But for this lettering, I've used a brush size of four pixels and just kind of scribbled out the letters to the best of my ability. Then I zoom in a bit uh, to do some fine tuning with the dot pen and the eraser. Even though I want this to have a handmade feel, I'm still kind of looking for areas to have clean angles and curves in certain spots, uh, just so it kind of maintains some semblance of readability, but you can still see that it's got this sort of bubbly and custom feel overall. Also, you may have noticed that I'm placing outlines around a lot of these objects that I'm making, and the reason for this is just because I'm working in this one bit black and white style. So with there only being those two colors, it's important to have some visual separation between the object line work and the background so that they're not bleeding together. Of course, this is the kind of thing that's up to your own stylistic preference, uh, but I tend to use outlines quite often in all my pixel work, so it's just kind of an extension of that, I suppose. To finish off the title lettering, I thought I'd try to find some different presentation for the bottom word. So after using the magic wand tool to select those letters individually, I painted a portion of them using the 50% dithering brush, and then it only applies into that selected area. Another finishing touch for this panel was creating a larger gradient for sort of a glow look. What's great for this is how the various dithering brush percentages are all compatible with one another and combine perfectly when you paint over them at different percentages. So here I'm applying dithering of 5, 20, and then 30% with a large brush size to achieve a more complex and gradual gradient look. By the way, this dithering brush is an add-on within this program. Uh, it's part of a set called the Pixel Brushes Mega Pack, which you can just download for free from the assets page of the Clip Studio home screen. Uh, definitely a great find because it makes these kind of complex gradients really simple and accessible. For the middle section, I'm doing a bit more of a freeform series of panels. So to help me out with the alignment, I've got a 10 by 10 pixel grid displayed right now. And I'm also enabling the snap to grid setting so that if you make selections or shapes, it grabs right onto those guides. So again, I'm doing my long form panel creation using the selection, fill, and deletion of interior pixels. And then I copy paste this panel around using the 10 by 10 grid to help me visualize the alignment. I took the last panel off grid because for now I was just looking for it to inset about the same as the one on the left side. So these panels are gonna feature a few close up shots of the little intruder character. And then in the free space between them, I'm adding Gary, the cat, uh, kind of being surrounded by this information and observations of his. The allotted space here is about 90 pixels in height. So to fill that out quickly, I've used a combination of the circular shape tool and a larger pixel brush size to create this very rough silhouette. And then that just entails kind of smoothing out all the edges and curves after that. In order to get smooth pixel curves, you want to keep track of your segment lengths along the silhouette. Uh, like you can see here, we're stepping gradually from spacings of one pixel to two pixels to three, which gives that kind of clean arc. I've decided to make Gary a black cat because I wanted him to have a lot of presence on the page. Uh, but also, I've got black cats in real life, so there's really just no other way for me to go, you know? Uh, however, I do want to do something to convey that he's associated with outer space, so I've added that patch of white fur in the shape of a star on his forehead. I've also used the white to create a bit of line work within his form as well, uh, just to provide a bit more definition, you know, indicating where the legs are and stuff like that. At this point, you can see that I started really getting into the idea of the organization and graphic design behind these panels. 
So I'm doing a bit of planning here using guides. And guides are these lines that you can drop down wherever you want if you want some kind of reference point in order to plan out how everything is lining up. If you want, you can also add the setting where your brush will snap to the guides. So you can draw lines along them like a ruler. Uh, but in this case, I'm using them just to indicate where the tops and bottoms of my existing panels are aligned in this section and using that to plan where the visual weight of my illustration should be placed across the panel. This was the first time I took a real serious run at trying to design a comic book page. And I've always had an interest and appreciation for graphic design, so it was a lot of fun to mix that up with my pixel art workflow and actually consider how to compose some logical flow to the series of illustrations here, uh, but also to craft a small story out of it as well. With these middle panels, I'm just establishing Gary's characterization of this intruder on board, and you can see they're described as this small, almost fiery looking creature. And so the other thing I wanted to try was to bring a pop of color just to set that off and draw some focus to the intruder character. When you're only giving yourself one color to achieve a pop of color, uh, you gotta choose carefully. And I went with this pure red tone with a saturation of 70%. Now red is generally a pretty strong color, so I find it's often necessary to keep the saturation value kind of moderate like that. Or an alternative could also be to shift it towards pink or orange if you want to soften it up a bit that way too. The final illustration in this section is going to depict this intruder kind of bouncing all over the walls in the panel. I wanted this to look like a really clean maneuver, so I'm using the line tool to place down perfect 45 degree angles by holding shift while I click and drag the lines out. Uh, this part was actually really fun because it reminded me of those screensavers with the bouncing shapes and kind of how rare it is to end up ever see it land perfectly in the corner of the frame. I finished this one off by adding some small impact spots along the border, uh, like it's actually hitting into and deforming the panel of the comic itself. The last illustration here is going to be another wide shot, showing Gary finally confronting the intruder. In the top panel we had sort of a wide establishing shot of the ship, then a few character close-ups below that, uh, so I wanted to have something that not only concluded the flow of the narrative, but also showed off the interior of the ship too. And at this point you'll see me kind of bringing everything together as far as the workflow and tools we've discussed. Uh, we've got some lines and angles, shape tools, dithering eventually, and then of course a lot of one pixel work with the dot pen. It was a good illustration to finish on because there were a lot of details to construct, and I had gotten comfortable in the software at this point and just fell right into the flow of things. So by the way, we've already discussed the full canvas size of this piece being 256 by 364 pixels. And with the way I've laid out the page into these three horizontal sections, a panel this size that I'm working on now for this final illustration is about 230 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. And I found that to be a decent amount of space to fit a wide illustration like this. And it gives it that balance of being detailed enough to capture what I want, but still holding a very obvious pixelated look. One of the concerns with making a pixel art comic, however, is to decide how much space your pixel art text is going to take up relative to your illustration. I decided to go with lettering that fit a space of 3 by 5 pixels for most letters. Uh, if you're in a pinch, you can also try to fit letters into a space of 3 by 4 but the clarity you get from at least a 5 pixel height is well worth sparing that extra pixel if you can. I also realized there was nowhere yet where I'd added any onomatopoeia lettering. Uh, you know how there's usually like a boom, pow kind of big lettering for actions and stuff? Um, well, the main action I had here was Gary pouncing at the intruder, uh, so I added some giant pounce lettering, uh, as if that's any kind of sound effect. Uh, but I found it funny, you know, that one was for me. And if nothing else, you gotta entertain yourself, you know? All right, so let's take a look at the final comic. Uh, we'll go one section at a time, and then the full page. So here's Gary's Galaxy.
All right, so you can see I've gone through and added a ton of decoration to the panels, uh, just trying to play with the visual styling a bit. I think my favorite is probably this little detail that leads you to the speed of light value during that line where it's mentioned. You know, perhaps a bit unnecessary, but it felt appropriate for the space theme here. You might also notice that I've softened the colors a little bit. So I've substituted the pure black and pure white for these colors that have a very low saturation of yellow-orange to them instead, which I think helps give a bit of a softer and almost vintage feeling to it. Let's go ahead and close out with some CRT time and take a look at a few close-ups of the panels there on the big screen. So once again, thank you to Clip Studio Paint and thank you for watching and take care and keep it square. <laughs>